Hey there, hi everybody. This is Joe Davis. I am the public art manager for the city of Lancaster. Um, and I am here today to talk to you all about our recent project, um, the PSA Temporary Murals Project. So we recently commissioned 10 artists to, um, to make original artwork that uh, shared messages related to, um, to COVID-19 and uh, keeping everybody safe and healthy. So um, I'm gonna be doing some chats with some of the artists, most of the artists, almost all the artists, maybe even all the artists, uh, every day for these two weeks at 2 p.m. So um, today I'm gonna be talking to Adam Serrano who is um, the mastermind behind this artwork. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can flip my screen. Yes, I can. Okay, this one. Uh, it is located over on um, South Prince Street, between, over by the, the intersection of Prince and Farnham. Um, and there's some other pictures. These are details of Adam's work. Um, he used a lot of images of uh, people working in the healthcare, um, in the healthcare area, in the healthcare field. He asked folks to send selfies of themselves with their ma masks on and working. Um, and there's a uh, there's some of the pictures. So, um, this is kind of new to me. This whole Facebook Live and. Um, joining with somebody. So right now we're waiting for Adam to join us and um, tell us just kind of a, a little background about his work, how he got started making artwork, also how he got started making murals, um, and a little more about his, oh, went away there for a second, his experience with this particular project. While we're waiting for him to join, does anybody have any questions? Um, I think I can yeah, I can put in, I think I have, yes, I think I have, there should be something that allows you to make questions. So yeah, anybody who has questions or wants to know more about the project and or questions specifically for, um, for Adam, um, feel free to type some in. Um, and yeah, and we're, we're just, Looking forward to Adam joining. I'm going to show you all while we're waiting some other. This is my. You can go to LancasterPublicArt.com to see um, to see all of these murals that are now up and around town. Um, there was ten artists that were commissioned. This one is on um, over. Ross Elementary School, Keisha Finney. I'll be talking to her later today. Um, and uh, and um, she's over, her, her work is over, over there. This is Selena Almanzar's work that's been um, actually changed a little bit. And I'm looking forward to talking to her more. I think it's next week we'll be talking to her about it. Um, here's Adam's work. Adam is, I think you're watching. So I'm wondering, Adam, if you can, if you can uh, somehow join in, you should get an, you should get a way where you can ask me to join, um, so that you can kind of talk with us. Not sure, sort of. Thank you for your patience, everybody. As I'm trying to work through this Instagram live chat. Just waiting. Oh, here we go. Okay. I think he's, I think he's here. I think he's coming. Um, and again, this is Adam's work. So we're going to be talking to Adam Serrano a little bit more. Hey. hey, there you are. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Good. All right. I was, this is my first. So we're going to be talking with um, almost all of the artists, potentially all of them. Uh, mm -hmm over the next two weeks and you are our first so it's really exciting to have you here and um and it was a little bit uh it's interesting just to like 
just know that you, you actually are here. We can do this. The technology mm -hmm. works. Yeah. yeah. This is my first time doing a uh, Instagram live uh, chat. This is cool. Yeah. So um, just to get started, um, tell us a little bit about your background as an artist. You know, um, how, like, where you got started making art, if you got any training, um, and kind of just a little bit about uh, just a brief background. Sure. Um, so I'm, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. Um, and uh, I would say that my love for graphic design and art kind of stemmed from a lot of the advertisements and, and graffiti art um, that I saw a lot as a kid. <clears throat> and then um, moving to Lancaster uh, around 10, 11 years old, um, you know, my mom let me explore a lot. And uh, this was like at the peak of like a lot of like underground art in Lancaster. Um, a lot of the old factory buildings were still being run by artists who had studio spaces. So, you know, I spent a lot of my teenage years um, before high school uh, kind of sneaking my way into these, um, you know, I would say like like gallery showings in these buildings. And I just ate it up. And I loved it. Um, and so you're talking about like the Keppel building and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so a lot of the apartments that you see in town now, um, the former factory buildings used to be, you know, kind of like a, uh, collaborated rented out art studio. Um, uh, that really hasn't changed all too much there. There's still some cool spots in Lancaster that do that, but that was kind of like my, the beginnings of my obsession with the city. Um, but it wasn't until I ended up at J.P. McCaskey, uh, the local high school, where teachers like Mr. Lawrence and Mrs. Wolf really, like, just embraced any student that had interest in art and kind of helped them escape from, you know, kind of like that urban cloud that everyone had over their heads. You know, like, we kind of felt like we were just stuck in the city and we couldn't live these like great artistic lives whether we wanted to be a musician or or just an artist but um yeah high school really changed that for me it it really opened me up as an artist and and kind of like cement a lot of my artistic direction um in the community so there was shout out to those awesome art teachers at jp yeah. that's great yeah um, yeah, and then, uh, you know, in my senior year, um, PCAD and the, I mean, I think, I think it's called AI Institute of York now, but um, there were a lot of these art schools that were coming to McCaskey and kind of showing the students, um, you know, possibilities uh, with, you know, attending art school or graphic design or things like that. So um, AI of York kind of snatched me up and I spent two years there um and then I kind of uh you know I really wanted to finish art school um but I kind of hit that wall with graphic design um where I spent my entire senior year in McCaskey in front of a computer and then within the next two years I kind of knew everything I wanted to know um so I ended up uh, shifting my efforts towards going back to McCaskey and directly helping these students because um, you know growing up in a city especially a city school our class was kind of like an ooey gooey class it was kind of like home you know uh, homeroom uh, so I would come back and, and help these students kind of embrace the fact that they're surrounded by paints and pencils and their teacher just wants to see them draw a square in six different points of light and if you don't want to do that, what do you want to do? So, you know, these students, the, a lot of the students that I used to go back to and help um, actually have really awesome careers now. Um, and uh, I had, you got students like Keisha, who um, we graduated in a similar time span. Um, she's another great example of McCaskey uh, producing a hungry, hungry artist um, who gives back to the community a lot. That's so. great. And, that, and that's like, I guess, you know, a lot of your work, because I know I'm pretty familiar with work, is 
really community based. So um, it sounds like you got started really early in your in your art career, just working with community and and um, with just going back to to McCaskey, which is awesome. So how did you get into mural making? Um, I think I think I, I got the taste for large format art. Uh, when I when I designed my very first logo uh, for Tyreek Jackson, who um, right now he's like a famous barber, you can catch him online everywhere. But at the time in like '05, he uh, he was opening up his second shop on James Street, and uh, I had done a logo that was similar to a baseball logo, but it was a barber kind of shaving someone's head, and uh, he, this was the first time that I saw my artwork just huge. It was like eight by, you know, six. And uh, I was watching a guy put it on the window. And um, I just kept thinking, man, if, if I can eventually design stuff and then apply it to walls, like it just makes sense to me. Like, like just that handcraft from beginning to end uh, from Photoshop to the physical space. That was kind of like my first taste. So that um, bit more about that because your process is is different maybe that a lot of people when they think of making murals they think of paint always paint yeah. or to applying paint directly to a wall to a yeah. surface your process is a little different than that so tell me a little bit about how you well i mean you could use this mural um as an example the one mm -hmm. that's over on uh on on south prince as an example yeah. you know to talk about because this is this is a little different. You see there's images in here. There's actually photographs. So tell me like how, how you made that happen. So um, th this style, this, this rip and stick paper and glue style, um, you know, like I, like I said earlier, it, it, growing up in New York, advertisements were like that. They were pasted onto walls, ripped down, and then a new layer of artwork would go over top. So, um, you know, working in a digital realm, I can set everything up first, like an advertiser would, and then map it out to be put on a wall, like an advertisement. So knowing the fact that I can start digitally gave me the opportunity to um, aim towards the community. So I, I made a shout out on Facebook and I simply asked if, if anybody could send me a selfie of uh, someone who works in the medical field. And I mean, it was, it was almost 200 photos I had gotten and it was just perfect for this type of project. I can go into Photoshop and um, do little, little half tone line patterns, make it really look like old school print and uh, just print them out, rip them up and, and stick them onto the, the wall around the central figure. Um, and then of course, you know, trying to make it look like a true graffiti piece. Uh, I went in with um, similar colors as the print to just give it that feel. You can see the drip lines and the crown um, and like a little bit of splatter in certain areas. But yeah. So was that actual, like these drip lines you're talking about, was that actual paint that you used or was it yeah. was all printed out? So, um, so everything was kind of in layers. The central figure was a lot of that is just simply print. Um, and then, of course, the faces. And um, I'm not, <laughs> I don't have a steady hand in general. So I knew hand drawing typography onto the board was probably not going to happen the way I wanted to. So all the lettering is also printed. But when it came to the spray paint pieces, I kind of still took a digital route. Uh, I projected the graphics onto um, a poster board and then I traced it cut it out from the poster board so I knew that the measurements would line up onto the piece laid the piece down spray painted the wing but when it came to the crown I did a light spray paint so the crown was kind of there kind of sorta and then I went in and guided my hand along that edge so mm -hmm. there was still somewhat of a technical edge to it um, mm -hmm. but you know, that helped my hand style be a little more polished. Yeah. And also to those of you who want to see a closer look at Adam working on this painting, 
WGAL filmed him um, actually when he was working on it. And you can see him at work. Um, if you go to WGAL, I think you can just Google WGAL and um, PSA murals and it'll come up. So Adam, um, what do you think, you know, moving forward from this, first of all, what was the, what's been sort of the uh, most rewarding or, or something you want to talk about um, as far as your experience with these PSA murals, where you are now, um, and where do you where do you think you're? What's the next steps? Where you're going? So um, I think we've been in lockdown for long enough to have certain things become a, a more of a trend now. So now that I did the selfie request thing, I and then of course everyone's at home and they're like, yeah, I'll send them a selfie. I think now I can do more projects where people want to get involved directly from their homes. Um, because soon after the mural was placed on uh, South Prince, um, I was getting pictures of people <laughs> like focused, like within their cars, hopefully they weren't driving, but zooming in, circling their friend's face and ah. then inboxing me w along with a tag with their friend. And it was, it's crazy to see or to yeah to see people send me a selfie they want to get involved and then afterward they they feel that ownership over it and they're like like look and then you know so i kind of want to do more of those i want to see well, how big i can uh make it happen maybe a giant collage from everyone online yeah so. cool we'll keep it let me know if there's anything yeah. that sounds really great of course, yeah. Adam, thank you so much for, um, for giving me a little bit of your time to chat. Um, before we go, is there anything else you want to say about your work or the podcast or, or anything? Uh, yeah. Um, I, know, I know you and I talked about um, getting some sort of social media uh, feed out there where people can kind of learn to do some of these things on their own. Um, you know, whether it's a mural or smaller projects. So um, keep a lookout for that. If you guys want to try this on your own, uh, in any level, paint, paper, glue, whatever, uh, just keep an eye out onto um, LancasterPublicArtArts.com. Uh, art, well, singular. Lancaster okay, LancasterPublicArt.com or yeah. follow them on Facebook or Instagram. Um, and we might be posting uh, tips and tricks on how to become a muralist. Cool. And can people get in touch with you? Anybody who um, sees yeah. this wants to learn a little bit more about how they could do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, you can find all of my social media, my phone number, my email address. You can find it all uh, at adamserrano.com. Awesome. Adam, thanks so much. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. And um, enjoy the rest of your day. Good luck with keep with the collage and all your future projects. Awesome. Thank you so much, Joe. See ya.